you roll it to is going to give you a here it is a prescription you hear that you do not use the language of emotion you use the language of reason and that was the conflict between myself and myron and this girl this french canadian girl where she was proven wrong provably wrong and you know what she defaulted to she defaults to, well, that's your opinion, and that's my opinion, and we can agree to disagree, blah, blah, blah. No, no, we can't, because you're wrong. Because my priority in this show, my show, and then anytime I go on Fresh and Fit, and certainly I, I, would, I think Myron would agree with me, is that we're not looking for what feels good. That's right. So it's not about what feels good. It's about the truth. And it doesn't matter if the truth makes you feel bad. The truth is the truth. And I'll, I'll show you a little clip here from uh, our good friend, Michaela Peterson here a little while. And I'm not trying to shit on her. It's not her I want to focus on. It's the guy she's interviewing in this. But it's all about, oh, you know, I, you make people feel bad. Like she's ta not talking to me. She's talking to this guy, right? And, you know, inadvertently, he's trying to be as polite and as courteous as he can be in this whole thing. But she defaults to appeals to emotion because that's the only language she speaks. And the French Canadian girl that was on Fresh and Fit, that's all she understands. She doesn't understand any other language. That's right. Men speak in logic and reason, women speak in emotions. I mean, generally speaking, right? Of course, there are many men that speak in emotional terms and women can be taught to speak in logical terms, but they have to be taught. Their default is appealing to emotion. You made me feel bad Therefore, what you said is wrong. No, just because I made you feel bad doesn't mean what I said isn't the truth. The truth is the truth, regardless of how you feel about the truth. Women rarely understand or learn the language of rationality rarely. and reason and empiricism. Shoutouts to Madame Curie. They only speak emotional ease. And I don't mean woman ease, I mean like they only defer and default to emotional appeals right it's like you made me feel bad therefore you are a bad person not worth listening to even if you're correct right which is why matthew hussey has to talk the way he does because girls will literally not listen to him if he tells the truth he has to tiptoe and dance around and talk about like fifis and you know all of this kind of garbage and of course because he does that, the girls learn nothing and just keep repeating the same mistakes over and over, but they love him, right? And I mean, because they love him, he's a multimillionaire, so maybe he's the smart one here. But again, I'm dedicated to logic and reason, I guess, unfortunately. <laughs> so if they, they, when a woman can't be right, as I said before, it's usually it's like, oh, who hurt you? Exactly. They're trying to win the right. argument by- Right, 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 right. Oh, by the way, Next episode, I'm going to do this right now. And, uh, you know, I, I make my episodes in bundles, right? So my next episode, so the one coming up after this one. I'm going to do an episode entirely on what people post in their uh, comments to me. I'm going to comment on people's comments, okay? And when they're bad, the comments are always like, Oh, you must be an N-word. Oh, you must be an M-word. Who hurts you? Do you even, have you even talked to girls, etc. Hello and welcome to the Helios blog. My name is Helios, here for another reaction video. If you're new to the channel, liking the content, hit the sub, hit all for notifications. If you'd like to support me, I do have a Patreon with exclusive content, newly revamped, posting weekly content, guys. Patreon.com slash the Helios blog. Just go there and subscribe. Again, it's Patreon.com slash the Helios blog. So much good stuff there. Just go there and check it out. Um, you could also drop me a donation like Tom M here. Shout outs to him. Uh, link is in the description. By reframing the argument to emotional conditions. So you, uh, an emotionalist can't win a rational argument with emotion and vice versa. So a guy who's like telling you deductive reasoning, they'll say, well, you know, here's, here it is black and white. This is, this is the, here's the stats. Here's the numbers. Here it is. Right. And then the girl will say, who hurts you? Right. So here's the point. It's this, the, the, here's the adage, okay? Don't play chess with a pigeon. It'll knock over the pieces, take a, a dump on the board, and it will enjoy it. So it's pointless. I'm not saying women are pigeons. What I'm saying is, 
if you're trying to have a rational debate with a girl, she's literally going to turn it from chess to knocking over the pieces and making just a disaster area of the whole discussion. If she's losing, right? Uh, because again, women, not all of them, but so many, and especially in 2023, they're going on emotional appeals, right? So like if you have a debate between quote unquote womanists and, uh, you know, MRAs or whatever, it's just you make women feel bad. Therefore, you're a bad person. Therefore, why should we listen to you? You know, oh, you think that women are below men and, and so on, right? You know, uh, it's it's like the laws of physics, and here's here's here here it is laid out for you, and th it's like uh, oh well that's your truth, not my truth. That's when when you hear that oh well, I'm living my truth. No, there is the truth, and then there is your interpretation of that. Yeah, uh, your truth is not truth at all. It is your delusional thinking of what reality actually is like, and actually. If you look in 2023, a lot of these women, especially if they're really ultra attractive, they basically live in a reality distortion bubble, right? So many people want to sleep with them, so many men, that they literally just lie to them. So these girls are insulated from true reality. They think that everything is sugar spice and everything nice. Uh, everyone just, just gets stuff for free. They have no understanding of the value of things. They don't understand what money even is. Like, because they've never had to work for it, they just get everything for free. Like, you think the girl on the boat in Dubai, she understands the value of the yacht? She doesn't understand that. She got it all for free. She understands the value of a plane ticket? She doesn't understand that. The amount of work required, the sacrifice, the struggle, the toil, the blood, the sweat, the tears. You think she cares? No. They wait at the finish line and sleep with the winners. That's how it is, guys. 2023. And if you think you are living according to your interpretation of that, well, then we can have that discussion. But the fact remains is that there is no, you know, agree to disagree. Oh, that's just your opinion. No, those are the facts. And your opinion is you can't deal with those. And again, that's that cognitive dissonance there. And when you bring up that topic and when you like have that discussion, and it doesn't have to, I, I of course, it's e women are easy to, certainly young women are easy to point this out guys do this too like the guys who are like really sort of aligning with this blue pill feminization uh you know that they've been acculturated and raised and thinking well the more i identify with women then the more they're gonna like me they'll have right they'll they'll speak in emotion they'll speak in emotionalese and uh when they speak in emotionalese it's very obvious that they're, they're talking in like a girl terms right and in a girl favored way and in a way that like because it's girl favored they have no idea they're falling into the trap of being a beta male, right? Just by doing that, you have already failed. I have the same response. Like, guy, woke guys? They're, yeah, that's right. They'll be uh, white knights, right? So the idea is, you say the truth. So something like, men and women aren't equal. You know, a man, uh, like if a man and woman have, have a wrestling competition and it's average weight for men and women, average height, the man will just destroy the, the girl. So be like, the, a guy will chime in and be like, no, look at Ronda Rousey. Look at like, la la la. They'll, 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 they'll take one individual and, and generalize that to the population saying that women can beat men. Well, no. If you take the average man, the average woman, no chance. If you take even the below average man and the average woman, no chance. Like she needs to be like a professional trained fighter and the guy needs to be a stick. And even then the girl could get beat. See what I'm saying, guys? This is the idea. Ethan Klein, uh, woke guys, Hassan, will, will proceed from an emotionalist right. basis. Right, exactly. And as I've said- And that's why Hassan is only capable of ad hominem attacks, right? Like if you see him watching his videos, it's a disaster. Cause he, like, he almost never uses facts, data, and statistics, except when arguing for femme-centric points of view. Then he's suddenly very rational, very reasonable, very researched, very debate-y, or debate-inclined. But no, if it's anything else, it's just straight up ad hominem attacks. <laughs> like, what is that? Before, you have sort of these moral absolutists and these moral relativists, and you've got these empirical absolutists and empirical relativists, but it's, it's a conversation of the language of emotion and the language of reason. When their language of reason is trying to win a debate, it presumes that the emotionalist that they're debating has the same goal of coming to what is true and what is not. 
Right, so when uh, you're trying to have a rational debate, you assume that the other person is going to actually try to rationally debate you. And then what they do is they try to knock over all the pieces and crap on the board. Well, then it's not a debate at all. What's the point? You're debating in bad faith. You're attacking my character. You're calling me a N-word. You're calling me an M-word. Well, I mean, what, what, what can anyone say? <laughs> Obviously, that's ridiculous, right? What is a fact and what is not? What is true and what is false? The emotionalist, the believer, that side, the blue pill really thinking, is, is this, is this right or is this wrong? Is and it doesn't matter if, it, and no, 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 it's not about is it right or is it wrong. He, he means from an emotional perspective, is it good or is it bad, right? Because right or wrong is, is a logical debate, right? Um, but a BP perspective is, is it okay? Is it um, problematic, quote unquote? That used to be the old word. Now it's like, you know, some other buzzword garbage. But that's the idea. Is the person problematic do are they displaying wrong think are they going against what the crowd is saying that they should be saying well i mean that's not a debate you're just you know court of public opinioning it basically all right um let's go on um this article by rolo tomasi equalism and masculinity what a lot of womanists hate about rp theory is that it simply does a better job of predicting social behavior than womanism ever has I'd like to think that RP awareness has fundamentally altered, or enlightened if you like, into gender interpretations and understanding in a relatively short time, but that would be a mistake. There's a distinct group of self-evincing RP guys who like to remind us in various comment threads that it hasn't always been thus. This story is our forebearers knew better with regard to how men and women ought to interact with one another, and essentially spelled this out for future generations in the religious and philosophical texts of antiquity. While I can't deny the merit of this, I also know that the men of those bygone eras didn't have anything approaching the mass of information and the connectivity men possess today. It's easy to get caught up in the romanticism of the idea that back in some golden age of manhood, men knew about the dangers of allowing women's hypergamous natures to run amok. I'm sure those men knew of the consequences of allowing women to control their fate. I'm sure there were beta men and, uh, you know, C-star, C-cade men as well. But even the most wise alpha among them could never, for instance, understand the impact that a unilaterally feminine-controlled form of birth control would affect upon a globalized society. The sages of manhood past may still have many relevant lessons for the men of today, but they simply lacked the compounded experience and understanding men possess now. Though they undoubtedly were keen observers of human behavior, the greatest thinkers of antiquity simply didn't have an inkling as to the evolved biological motivators of the bedroom fund strategies our psyches developed in our hunter-gatherer human past. What frustrates the advocates of this bygone manhood wisdom is that for all of our collective experiences and knowledge, for the past 60 or so years, men struggle to come to terms with what masculinity should mean to them. For all of the accumulated male experiences and relation of it that's led to RP awareness, men still grapple with what being a man means to them. Undoing of a man. When I do consults with men of all ages, I have to begin from a presumption that what these men's concept of masculinity is usually is the result of a deliberate attempt by the feminine imperative to confuse men about what being a man should be for him. Even the men who tell me that they were raised by the most dominant, positively masculine fathers still suffer the internalized effects from this feminized effort to cast doubt on men's masculinity. Uh, recently, NPR began a series of articles attempting to suss out what it means to be a man in the 21st century. I do listen to NPR, and while I know bias will almost be inevitable, I couldn't help but assess what a morass attempting to define masculinity has become for contemporary men. Each story, each attempt to redefine masculinity relied on the same tired tropes the feminine imperative has been using for men since the start of the bedroom fun revolution. Weakness and vulnerability is sold as strength. Submissiveness and compromise to the feminine is sold as quote-unquote support and deserving of praise and reciprocal appreciation, which never manifests in women. Beta is alpha and alpha is insecurity, bluster and compensation. Those are the main premises, and to a large degree, most RP-aware men realize that behavior is the only true determinant of motivation and reject the feminized, egalitarian, equalist messaging. 
However, what still surprises me is that this same deliberate effort to cast doubt on what masculinity should be for a man hasn't changed its message or methods of conditioning men to accept this for almost 40 years now. Through the late 80s and up to now, the idea of anything positively masculine is either ridiculed, cast as the M-word, or implies a man might be into other men if he's too celebratory of his maleness. Since the start of the bedroom fun revolution, any definition of what masculinity truly should mean has been subject to the approval of the feminine imperative. In the absence of a clear definition of what masculinity is for men, the feminine imperative is free to create a grotesque a straw man of ugly masculinity or as beatific a womanized model of masculinity as it needs to serve its purpose. With the aid of the male catch-22, blurring and distorting masculinity, raising and conditioning men to accept ambiguity and doubt about the security of a manhood they're encouraged not to define for themselves, these are all the methodologies employed to ensure a feminine primary social order. Okay, so here is the cardinal rule of bedroom fund strategies. For one gender's bedroom fund strategy to succeed, the other gender must compromise or abandon their own. The mistake is applying a humanistic, egalitarian, equalist ideal to human bedroom fund strategies that evolved over millennia to be complementary to each other and not an equitable exchange of resources to be negotiated over. This is one reason genuine desire cannot be negotiated. This fundamental is rooted in our most primal, complementary understanding of bedroom fun. The point at which egalitarian equalism, which is the religion of womanism, fundamentally fails... It's presuming that intergender relation, relations should ideally exist in a goal state of egalitarian equalism and or a reciprocally equal state of mutually supporting interests. Hypergamy doesn't care about equalism and reciprocity. The genders evolve to be complementary to each other for the betterment of the species. Why do you think women form the most secure emotional attachment to men one to two degrees of attractiveness above themselves? So like, you know, a six is most attractive to an eight. For example, why is masculine dominance such an attractive male aspect for even the most womanist of women who'd otherwise plead for equality among the genders? And then here's, here's a quote and we'll, we'll go back to the video. I have a bit of a weird relationship with quote-unquote traditional masculinity. I've looked critically at it enough to know how much damage it does as a paradigm. I've seen the harm it can do to both men and women on an individual level. I've been subject to the violence it encourages. But despite all that, holy God does it ever turn me on. There's just something about assertiveness, let's be real, sometimes flat out arrogance, that does it for me. No matter how much I can be attracted to someone emotionally and intellectually, my swoons only happen when confronted by a powerfully competent man. This has led to some issues in my personal life. Who knew being attracted almost exclusively to men that inherently make bad partners wouldn't work out well for me? Actually, what's funny is that women almost exclusively choose men like this. Almost exclusively. All right, back to this. This my uh, is this my truth or is this the truth? That's that's a really fundamental difference. Fundamental. So when women default to, oh, it's all about love. That's a reframe, because they can't win a rational empirical argument where the goal of that argument is coming to whether it's true or it's false. That's right. Exactly. So they'll say you're a bad person. You're an N word. You're an M word. And guys. I'll show you, when I make this video, how many people just ad hominem attacks? Like, like they have no, there's no rational argument, right? Even when they think that they're being rational, all they're really doing is attacking my character, which is pointless because it doesn't defeat my arguments at all. All it does is say, effectively say, you're a bad person, you're a heathen for not believing in my religion. Well, I don't believe in your religion, so whatever. Call me all, all the heathen you want, it doesn't mean I'm wrong. That's the thing. That I'm against you doesn't mean I'm wrong. That I disagree, like, that I disagree fundamentally with, with, like, anyway. That you don't like me doesn't make my points incorrect. These are, like, um, what's it called? Perpendicular to each other. They don't conflict. You can dislike me and I can simultaneously be right. And, or you could like me and I could simultaneously be wrong. Right and wrong doesn't have to do with whether you like me or not. I mean, it does if you're having an emotional conversation, but. Now, believers who, it's all about love, that's interpreting. Because remember that emotion is not about, uh, it's not learning, it's not rationality, it's how I felt about something. And it's what was the emotional provocation? What is my body, How what's the emotional trigger that's 
I don't know, pumping adrenaline into my body or make oxytocin into my body or whatever, you know, chemical cocktail into my body. Remember, emo instinct, emotion, and reason are not magic. They oh, I, I forgot this, but let's bring this up now. Men and women are fundamentally different in how, in how they um, think about things, okay? So here we go. Both men and women, their top running program, as it were, is instinct. Both men and women. But after instinct, for women comes emotions and then comes reason. So what they do is they tend to filter their logic through their emotions. For men, instinct comes first, but it's followed then by reason and then emotion is after. So men, what they tend to do is they tend to filter their emotions through their logic, right? And so this fundamental disconnect between how men and women interpret the world, it leads to basically most of the arguments, right? Women will try to have an emotional argument when men are trying to have a rational argument. And they argue across. They don't actually argue about anything. Like, basically, the girl is like, I agree with what you said, but I don't like how you said it. And because I don't like how you said it, you're a bad person. And if you're a bad person, I don't want to listen to you. That's, that's how women logic. You see what I'm saying? And for men, it's, I don't care if I like you or not. The truth is the truth. You see the difference? They are, they are interpretive human processes. It's how we interpret information. But the problem is we prioritize emotion above everything else. And so that's how you get love justifies everything. So if, it, if, I'm, if I'm right about an argument from an empirical perspective and someone says, well, that ain't love, that I lose the argument because... The goal of the argument isn't about what's true and false. It's about what's love and what's not. What makes me feel good and what doesn't. So I'm a Kalo always starts with this. Oh, well, you know, I really, yeah, he's right about stuff, but it seems very angry. No, it sounds angry to you because I'm speaking the language of rationality and reason. And she's the reason why Rolo sounds angry is because he is saying things that make the girl angry because the truth is upsetting to people which is why it's hilarious right if you want to make money you make it by lying like matthew you don't make it by telling the truth although rollo has but think about matthew hussey's net worth versus rollo tomasi's net worth and you'll see the difference between truth and lies of course if you are a human being that cares about the betterment of the human race then maybe you don't want to lie to people for money but you know, Hassan and Matthew don't seem to care. Speaking the language of emotion, her point in being in that argument in the first place, argument, debate, whatever it is, the goal of the debate is to walk away with a good feeling. That's not why I ain't nice. I ain't nice. I'll go. I'll be happy to go in there and, and, and piss you off and give me, you can walk away with a bad feeling, but you know what you won't walk away with? You won't be uneducated. You'll That's right. You'll know the truth. But here's the thing, women are far less likely to accept the truth if it's not told in a nice way, if it's not sugarcoated. But the problem is this, by sugarcoating the truth, a lot of women won't even hear what the actual truth is. They'll just hear the nice platitudes and be destroyed anyway. So sometimes you just gotta be straight with it, guys. All right, uh, here is a article from Relationship Advice. Here's a post, uh, posted one day ago. My girlfriend, who's 21 female, called me a B-word to another guy. And the guy is 21 male, by the way. So my girlfriend told me that when she went out with her girlfriends... Let's stop right there. If your girl is going out with her girlfriends in a girl's night out, she's not your girl, she's everybody's girl. And we're going to find out in this article right here, or this post, exactly how and why she's everybody's girl. Watch. So she went out... And one of the guys in their group tried to buy her a drink. She said she had a boyfriend, so he asked to see a picture of me. She showed a regular picture of our faces and said I looked like a B-word. I'm not insecure at all. Uh, take whatever you want with that. With that, he said he won't buy her a drink until she says, My boyfriend's a B-word. I know this is a B-word thing to write on Reddit, and I get it. She was just saying dumb crap for him to buy her a drink. But like, come on. Uh, no. She's actively disrespecting you. She's actively seeking the attention of another man. She's actively accepting the advances of another man. Do you not understand how bad this is, guy? 
I'd like to think I'm a really good boyfriend and I only talk to her about her. I never speak bad about her under any circumstances. It makes me wonder how she talks about me behind my back. I mean, you know how. But she's not acting different. I never could tell this happened or if she didn't tell me. So this isn't about loyalty. Ah, uh, yes it is. It's about blatant disrespect to your face. She has a bunch of random streaks on Snapchat with random people, guys and girls. I don't know if she's keeping her options open or if it's because she's just a very social person. When this guy friend snapped her, that's when this story came up. Well, I mean, she has Snapchat streaks with random guys. What that means is that she's actively... Um, those guys all want to sleep with her. You realize that, right? And then here's the, uh, the guy finishes his thing. I don't know, this is a B-word thing to post, but it just made me angry that she talked negatively about me in any way, under any circumstances, because I'd never do that to her, especially for a drink at a bar. Well, she doesn't respect you. Let's see if anybody tells him that. 270 upvotes. This is messed up and just clearly shows a lack of respect on her side towards you. Wow, fantastic. She basically insulted you for some chump change. Upon hearing that, her reaction should have been getting up and leaving immediately and not reconnecting with these friends until a real apology. Wow, this actually made me mad. Ah, uh, yeah. You see? Somebody knows what side his bread is buttered on. Uh, okay. 111 upvotes. Why is she so desperate for a drink to be bought for her to the point of disrespecting you? If she can't spare the money and just wants to use dudes, including you, then she sucks already. Your feelings are valid. Yeah. Uh, here, here, here. 59 upvotes. I mean, she's a B-word. It took a couple bucks for her to publicly disrespect you to a guy obviously trying to pick her up. The streets called out and she answered, Bail, dude. Bail fast and bail hard. I could not have said it better and we're going to end the video right there. Again, guys, if you're new to the channel, like in the content, hit that sub, hit all for notifications. If you'd like to support me, there's a Patreon. Newly revamped content, posting every week. Patreon.com slash The Helios Blog. Just go there and subscribe, guys. Patreon.com slash The Helios Blog. You could also drop me a donation like Tom M here. Shoutouts to him. Again, it, link is in the description. Thank you so much, guys, for taking the time out of your busy day to listen to my videos, especially if you made it to the end. You guys are wonderful. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you next time.